In our previous lesson, I explained how to create a sub-interface on our firewall. In this lesson, I will tell you how to configure DHCP server. If there is no DHCP server in your network, you can configure the DHCP server on your firewall and enable users in this VLAN to get IP. Here we have VLAN 11, VLAN 12 and VLAN 13. Let's configure DHCP server for VLAN 11 and VLAN 12 on our firewall, and let our users get IP from firewall. Now let's start our configuration by switching to the firewall side. When we come to the firewall side, we will create our DHCP server under the network tab. Let's add here. Here we choose from which interface we will give IP to users. I choose interface 14.11. We will distribute IP to users in VLAN 11. Here we determine the IP range that we will distribute. If you type 192.168.1.024 it will distribute from 1.1 to 254. Or when you type 192.168.1.10-192.168.1.20, it will distribute 10 to 20 IPs. Let's add here. Let it start from 172.16.11.11 and distribute it until 172.16.11.50. We have created our IP pool. We will distribute up to 50 IPs starting from 11 to our users here. Here you can prevent an address from being distributed from the DHCP server. You can add your firewall's IP here if you want. You don't need to add this as we have already created our pool from 11 to 50. We do this in VLAN 12 for example. Here, in the timeout section, you can determine how long this IP will remain with the user. You can also set this duration here. Let's say OK by leaving it in one day. Now let's add another DHCP pool for subnet 172.16.12.0. Let's choose interface 4.12, from there let's create our pool. Let's write our subnet here, I'm typing 172.16.12.0, it will distribute IP starting from 1 to 254. From here, let's prevent the distribution of our firewall by reserving its IP address. I am writing 172.16.12.254. If you want, you can also write the MAC address here and have a user always get the same IP. You can also set this here. Here, in the timeout section, you can determine how long this IP address will remain with the user. Let's set it to 30 minutes. Now that we have configured our DHCP server, let's send our settings to our firewall. Our settings have been successfully loaded. Let's close our window and return to our topology. When we come to our topology, we have configured the DHCP server for VLAN 11 and VLAN 12 on our firewall. We currently have two clients in our network. Our client 1 is in VLAN 11 and our client 2 is in VLAN 12. Let's check whether these clients have received their IP addresses or not. Our client 1 here is at VLAN 11. Our client 2 here is at VLAN 12. Let's look at client 1 first. Let's open the command line and type pip config. As you can see, our user here got the IP of 172.16.11.11 and got 255 .255 .255 as the subnet mask. There is no default gateway IP here, because we did not enter this IP when we created the pool. Now let's check client 2. After checking client 2, let's enter the default gateway IPs. Our user here got 172.16.12.1. Because we gave 172.16.12.024 to the DHCP pool, so he got the first IP. Now let's go to our firewall and enter the gateway IPs as well. Let's change the IP settings in VLAN 11. When we come to the option section, we can write the subnet mask and gateway IP here. Our gateway IP is 172.16.11.254 and our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Here we can also write the DNS IP. If you have a corporate structure and you have a DNS server, you write it. There are custom DHCP options here. You can distribute the IPs of various devices you use in your network via DHCP server. For example, if you are using IP phones in your network, you can distribute the DFTP server or SIP server IP here so that these phones can register with the server. For example, Let's make an example for Cisco Call Manager. Let it be called Call Manager. We write the DFTP server code here. It goes 150 on Cisco routers and 66 on DHCP servers. When we use option 66 code, when IP phones get IP from DHCP server, we will send TFTP server IP to IP phones. Here we write the IP address of our DFTP server or Call Manager. 
let's call our call manager IP address 172.16.55.200. Now we will give this user gateway IP, DNS IP, subnet mask and call manager's IP from DHCP server. I say OK. Let's send the changes we made to our firewall by saying commit. Now our settings have been successfully uploaded to the firewall. Let's close our windows and go to client 1 to get the IP address again. As you can see he is now at his old address. Let's get him to leave this IP address and get it again. Let's make it leave the IP address with the ipconfig slash release command and get the new IP address with the renew command. He left his IP address now. Let's get him IP again with the renew command. As you can see now. It got the new IP address and you can see that the gateway IP came when it got the IP address. We can see all IPs with the ipconfig slash all command. When you say ipconfig slash all, you can see the DNS IP, gateway IP and DHCP server IP here. Now let's go to the firewall side and check from there. From here, you can see the IPs distributed by the DHCP server. When we say and just column right here, it will fit here completely. You can see that the device whose host name is client1 has received the IP of 172.16.11.11. .11. Here you can see the duration and the date it was received. This is how we configure the DHCP server. If you do not have a DHCP server in your network, you can distribute IPs to the clients in this way through your firewall. We talked about DHCP server configuration in this lesson. We will talk about DHCP relay configuration in our next lesson. See you in our next lesson. Goodbye.